Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to anyone everywhere around. Um, thank you for coming back uh, to continue listening and uh, following, commenting uh, to my philosophical channel, philosophical reader channel, as said and explained. Um, right, so as promised, um, today I'm going to make the first try of um, working with a little text, really, really small text, almost like two or um, three sentences. You can see I have my Aristotle book here with us. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> um, so we will talk a little bit about uh, Aristotle physics and the first opening sentences of the physics by Aristotle. At, at the end of the, the video, I will give also another hint regarding the methodical questions that I try to uh, present in the two intros um, videos. So, first to the question, why begin with Aristotle? Well, the, the, the answer is um, rather simple. Um, Aristotle, in a way, determined almost all the terms, all the problems, all the difficulties, and perhaps also most of the hints and the solutions that we have in the history of philosophy until today. Indeed, um, as um, one comment at least um, ask why not begin with Plato well of course uh, the history of philosophy is always splitted between the ones working more in the Platonist direction and the ones working more with Aristotle um, I confess to be of the second kind for me Aristotle um, really serves as a kind of a compendium one can find in Aristotle's writings almost everything that one wishes to uh, to find if it is morals or metaphysics or logics or uh, linguistics and uh, so so vital and so forth so uh, I mean like um, his project his philosophical project was really enorm and for me as I always say um, what is most uh, attractive about um, the writings and the thought of Aristotle is that he is very eager to reach definitions and I think uh, that one of the therapeutic um, qualities of dealing with philosophy is actually reach a good definition of a problem of an object of some reality because I think that when we define rightly and of course perhaps we will have uh, still the time to think about what does it mean to define rightly, what does it mean to correctly define something, um, and what is the relation between defining something correctly and <clears throat> being uh, mistaken about something, which in my mind is a part of any definition, but let, leave, let us leave, us for, leave that for, for another video, perhaps a precise video on that on that uh, um, question and point um, when we define something also in a other therapeutical um, process also in medicine also in psychotherapy psychoanalysis uh, we have already a kind of a grasp of what we are dealing with and this grasp itself can supply some relief um, some uh, simplification of um, of our problem and um, you will also see that I'm not only an Aristotelian but also and centrally um, a Cartesian and as a Cartesian I believe that um, it is not at the end it is not complexity 
um, or sophistication, but rather simplicity, which is uh, sought after in philosophical questioning. And it is a merit and not a vice of a philosopher when he is brave enough uh, to insist on being simple rather than on being very impressive uh, and sophisticated, if you know what I mean. Okay, we are already in the five, five, five minutes uh, away in our video and I still did not read Aristotle. So let me um, read slowly this sentence uh, from book one uh, of the physics. Uh, to the ones who are interested, this is uh, 184A10 according to the um, um, yeah, standard numerization of Aristotle. So, here I go. When the objects of an inquiry in any department have principles, causes, or elements, it is through acquaintance with these, that is to say with these principles, causes, or elements, that knowledge and understanding is attained. For we do not think that we know a thing until we are acquainted with its primary causes or first principles and have carried our analysis as far as its elements. Plainly, therefore, in the science of nature, too, our first task will be to try to determine what relates to its principles. Okay, one of the most uh, influential, haunting uh, sentences in the history of philosophy, in the history of epistemology, uh, medieval renaissance, uh, 17th century, um, and I think relevant also today. Of course, Aristotle things here about the physics, that is to say about the science of nature, which as you probably know, for Aristotle precedes uh, the science of metaphysics, that comes after the physics. But he says to us that actually he refers to any inquiry, that is to say to any method. Uh, indeed, the, the, the term, uh, I verified the important uh, words in this passage uh, with the Greek, with the Greek um, is inquiry refers here to methodos, to method. That is to say, we have here to do with the question of how constructing a method of inquiry. Not any inquiry is also a methodic inquiry. And we surely have to think also about what is a method. The first thing that I would suggest in order to frame what is a method in this framework, which is Aristotelian and perhaps later also Cartesian, is um, to say that a method has to do with order and with ordering. That is to say, without an order, without determining what comes first and what comes next, there could be no methodical inquiry. Um, met odos come from uh, the term um, odos, which is a way. That is to say, a method is always a way. It is always a process. It is also a transit from one situation to another. And indeed, in a philosophical or scientific inquiry, as we define it, define it in philosophy, we are talking about a kind of a passage from one state to another. And I will also dedicate uh, a video to this passage between the two states. And I think, for me, uh, we are approaching again the 10 minutes, so I will, I will say very little. Perhaps I will have to delve again into this sentence in the next um, video. 
I think that the most important um, question that this opening paragraph of the physics leaves me with is what is a principle? Principles in the Greek is archai, uh, which we can also um, uh, translate as beginning. Um, yeah, beginning is actually arche, um, is perhaps the simplest and straightest translation. So in that sense, what Aristotle tells us until now is that method has to do with the analysis of beginnings. He also adds beginnings or causes, that is to say, ITI, or elements. That is to say, we have several variations of these first items of um, an inquiry. So I leave us uh, this rather long uh, uh, video with this question, what is a principle? And why do we need principles? What principles are and what principles are not? And I want to say yet now um, um, another thing which has to do uh, with the method of this inquiry that I'm trying to, to make here in this series, in this channel. And this is actually referring to uh, what I said in one of the two intro videos. I said that I think that philosophy is not deep. And uh, it was a kind of fast, you know, a kind of a lapsus, but more and more that I think about it, I, I really find that this was a, a true um, statement, a correct statement, the way I, I see the history of philosophy, rather as a kind of a very, um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a kind of a cover, as a kind of a surface on which one can see repeating um, problems, repeating figures, re repeating ideas, um, um, separating themselves and then joining themselves together again in a very interesting um, itinerary uh, history to follow. The thing is, but, that I have to specify here a little bit more and to say that even though I think that philosophical reality is not deep, is rather superficial. When we do arrive a definition, or one can say also, perhaps with Aristotle in the first place, um, finding a principle, we do create or produce a profundity or depth. That is to say, when a good definition is being laid on reality, on some problem that we encounter, then immediately we have a kind of a spatial structure, as I said, architectonic structure, creating, um, I would say, a relation between a surface and a depth. Um, and I think the, it is this profundity which is produced by philosophical work that f the, the philosopher is after. So it, I don't want to say that philosophy has nothing to do with profundity, but I want to say that the philosophical work itself is rather a surface-oriented uh, work. Uh, last sentence is just to say that if actually philosophical work functions as a cover, then one could say that philosophy has a very good potential to work as an effective repression. That is to say, philosophical work, philosophical method, can help one repress reality. 
that is to say push reality into a deeper strata while formatting it with the help of the tool of philosophical language okay let's stay with that thank you very much you are most invited to comment like uh, share um, in Facebook or here and I will return as soon as possible I have always so many things to do but I do not forget uh, this uh, little route that I'm trying to make uh, in this video channel bye bye